All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Um, uh, Cowbrellas 2.0. So um, this this one served the cows really well. It, it's 20 by 40, and the cows loved it, except in the wintertime it offered zero windbreak, and it was difficult for us to move around the farm, and it tied up a perfectly good running gear that I should have a hay rack on for moving bales. And so... We're gonna take it apart. We're gonna make some. I like how the Dakota boys, you know, Farming 4G and uh, Rocky Run out there and, and Tom at the other Angus Red Run, they, they them guys got these freestanding panels for uh, wind breaks. Well, we don't get the wind like they do. I mean, you, you, you're you never a half a mile from, a, a half a mile. You, you have to be a crooked line across this farm to come up with a half a mile without a tree break the wind but what we want is is in the winter time a wind break but in the summertime a sun break so what we're going to do is take these freestanding panels weld these pipes on there and the bolt pattern you know it, it bolts the the tarp down like that <clears throat> so the tarp will be bolted down there and all i did was just take the tubing and i just cut you know four inches off the tubing and then just weld it and just wrapped it around so now I just got to weld it. This is just kind of a shim to see, you know, where to get it. So I just got to finish welding it off. <clears throat> we'll take some tubing from under there and we'll come from the bottom side here and run parallel, weld it good to the bottom and just come up here and wherever it hits this tube at some point, weld it off just to add a little extra strength. Um, and then on this back side, just bungee cords and one two studs and two bungee cords so when it comes time to move them around uh karen can just walk ahead and she gets one flipped up i can come up catch with my forks move it and she's got the next one ready to go <sighs> so in the winter time we can put them end to end to just make a big long wall uh maybe on the end you kick one crooked to make more of a a, a trough against the wind kind of deal um but this summer we can put them back as a corral because we still got lots of work to do with the cows <clears throat> we can put them as a corral so you're gonna end up with like a 15 by 75 foot pole shed basically covered a covered building 15 by 75 and that is a lot of area for them cows to spread out and lay out um and it's fairly easy to move <sighs> That, that's going to be a nice setup. And then when you're working the cows, um, they're under shade the whole time when we're working them. So it's it's a less stress deal kind of thing. Um, you know, so there's lots of positives. It, it, it should be a really good system. Um, so I'm just going to take this old one apart and uh, make the new ones and, and then give myself a hay rack. So, all right, enough yapping. We got to get to work. Well, here we go. We spent all day, oh, oh my gosh, all day cutting the old one apart, making pieces, trying to figure out how we want to do this. We got two done. Oh my gosh, what a miserable project. Ugh. It's 7.30 at night. Yeah, 12-hour day for two of these stupid things. But we got a lot of parts cut, so tomorrow we can bring one into the yard. We got the, the 20 by 40 taken apart on the wagon, and, and the little uprights cut, and a lot of other stuff done, prep work. So tomorrow I can come out to the pasture, grab a panel, take it up to the shop, and we can just, boom. Weld it up, we'll use the, the shop instead of the generator and power tools and trying to charge batteries and that kind of stuff. Weld one up, run it out here, grab another one, bring it up to the yard, weld it up. And so the next four ought to, ought to just be like greased lightning. And uh, I'll, I'll stop talking until I get up here so you can see the other one. Well, it looks something like that. I think that'll work pretty all right. That looks that looks really nice. Right now we got them end to end. We can always overlap to close up gaps and play around with them and learn how to utilize them better. Um, 
But yeah, yeah, I like that. So we're gonna actually try and uh, manage graze this piece, but look at this nice lush, lush grass, some random alfalfa, random uh, dandelion and a ragweed and um, not a water hemp to be found. Some, some white clover up there. Oh boy, this is good. Good grazing, good grazing. Um, so the, this paddock goes just to the top of the, just to the other side of Cairn. It goes to the top of the hill, and then it comes off that tree line, and then uh, just, just to the, that follows that ditch line. And so, um, so we try to give, you know, areas, roughly equal areas, uh, but that south end is a little heavier soil, a um, little more productive. So we're going to uh, make that bay a little bit smaller. And the third bay is the least productive, so that one's a little bit bigger. And uh, so they're going to be here for a couple weeks. We'll just monitor it. And then they'll go up to that one for a, a week or two. So I'm half tempted to de debate myself whether or not we take a cutting off of that south piece to try for more winter feed for out here uh, to just generate um, more cows per acre kind of thing instead of letting that go to waste before they can get there we make bales out of it uh, and it comes back in the winter time and uh, yeah yeah so I don't know we'll 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 kind of play it by ear but we look good heading into August, the dry season. And so, all right guys, I'm out. All right, so day two of manufacturing here. Um, you know how when you do stuff, you know, your first one, you're like, you really think you have a great idea and by the time you get it done, you're like, holy Hannah, that was three months to make one bracket. Like, so then by the time you get the second one done, it takes you three hours and you've made a ton of improvements. So we're hoping today that panels three, four, five, and six just go fast. I, uh, so I think we got all the steel there with a piece of extra just in case, but most of that is prepped and ready to go. Um, I'll take my portable welding station home and then I'll come back and I'll scoop up these four panels. And uh, so we just take them up, put them on the apron and, and just Boom, get them done. Um, by golly, look at that wagon. I, I think I'm gonna leave that racing spoiler on there. <laughs> just, you know, cause every hay rack, you need just better handling at high speeds. And so we'll put the big stabilizer wings back there. <laughs> just, my, my snowmobile, that my little snowmobile only has 240 horse. Maybe I'd have mount that engine on here and just power one wheel and just whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> just have a racing running gear that'd be a great parade great parade item is a, a self-driving running gear <laughs> with a performance spoiler and smoke and some tires it uh yeah that snowmobile boy i'd like to i've never ran him on the grass and i'd love to just just make a couple hundred foot burn down the lane up there once just to see what he's like on grass it uh he's just angry that that thousand snowmobile is just angry it, it, like my new skidoo you drive him it's like a high-end sports car it's the cockpit's comfy smooth quiet but but pretty you know performance wise you're like holy dang this is pretty impressive for what it is um but that old muscle sled it's like an old hemi cuda built up for racing i mean it's loud it's violent it's mean and it's just it's just ready to go and uh you know idling idling at 10 miles an hour you're like is that thing serious or not you know just like when you see them big muscle cars and you're like hmm i wonder what he's really got done and then you whack the throttle whoo, the ground shakes and, and you feel it through your arms and stuff and when you hit the throttle on that sled on the ice um, puts about one and a half G-forces through you uh, and, uh, for acceleration. I remember one time we were at one race and uh, it was a rough track and a, and a hump and then the ice heaved overnight after they shaved it 
and then they had big snow banks on the side and the wind was blowing you into the side. And uh, at 120 miles an hour, I had to let off right before the finish line. I let off uh, to let the sled correct. And then I got back on the throttle and at 120 getting back on the throttle, the acceleration there was, was the equivalent of like if you're doing you know, 30 or 40 miles an hour in your car and you floor it and you boom, boom, and it downshifts and you feel it surge. Um, that's about how hard it accelerated from 120 up. And so, yeah, leaving the line, um, that thing is just unreal. But now you guys kind of got me babbling on something else. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, get, get my stuff up to the yard and get these four panels up to the yard and then um when we get the manure spreader this fall i think we'll just kind of push this into a little pile and take that bale squeezer and and drop the manure spreader clean this little spot up uh we want to get this alfalfa off this week so karen uh i gotta work the next couple weeks full time in the shop to get caught up in the shop karen can do this hay and then as soon as this hay is off she can get the no-till drill and get our sorghum sedan and, and Shane Holtz just tried sorghum sedan and his alfalfa and it is kind of what we thought it would be it's you know it's how, how do you compete with alfalfa um, but I'm gonna try it as well as he did and uh, even if it just fills in some thin spots you know who cares um, but we'll take we'll take and push this stuff because all this is leaving our little portable corrals leaving to the new pasture. So we'll just push this into a little pile up by the road and, or not by the road, you know, but on the headland. Um, and then she can drill here as well. Um, and then hopefully this fall, we have a massive, massive silage crop. Uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear and see what the alfalfa does. Good. We got good moisture, good moisture in the ground. I mean, you just barely touch the ground and you can see it darken up. Um, right there and so yeah all right I, i'm talking too much we got to get to work there we go something simple like that get the other two put in position oh this is nice you can feel the coolness in here holy cow that's nice old 72 <clears throat> she ain't got much left yeah yeah that'll be nice for working the cows Everybody's shaded and cool. Oh boy. Oh, well, here we are. We're done. We got to square them up, you know, take a few minutes, square everything up. Um, but this is the gist of it. We'll get some straw tomorrow. We'll get some straw in here, get a couple bales rolled out and make a nice bedding, a nice straw pack to protect the pasture. And then, uh, then we're going to shoot off this corner just on the other side of mighty massy is uh, the the perimeter fence the four wire so we'll just shoot off of here with corral panels to the four wire so when it comes time to round them up we just bring them around the unit take this row and run some corral panels up towards towards like that orange stake as far as we can get and then uh and then just bring them up if all if all you had to do is chase them along fence line by default they'll they'll get in here and uh, then when we're not chasing them up you just open up that end one so they can go past um, the next fantasy I had is uh, put a hitch on that end put an axle through this tube with a couple of wheels back here you know get that wheel out here a little ways a couple feet to offer a lot of stability and uh, and so then like at that end maybe on the top bar or whatever you'd have a winch and you click 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 and it would roll that axle and it would pull down on that hitch and then it would lift the unit up so then all you'd have to do so if karen's out here and she needs to move from paddock to paddock um you could literally just back up with the tractor put your pin in and click 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 drive to where you want set it down and uh yeah i don't know that's a long ways away just saying but it's kind of nice in here i'll tell you that it's kind of nice it uh yeah i'm looking forward to this 
up on this hilltop all winter long. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So, all right, that's all I got for you guys.